folks, we've been talking about the Federal Reserve the entire year for obvious reasons because we can see what's happening with inflation. I know I've beat that horse into the ground. However, it is important. It's front and center. There was a Fed meeting this week, and we'll get to that. But, of course, Friday afternoon, the Dow ended up in the green, up 300 points, which uh, capped off an interesting week. It certainly was. I mean, we had a, a terrific month. I mean, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up the most in like 50 years last month, up over 14 percent. But this week, the S&P uh, was down three and a half percent. The Nasdaq down six and small caps, which have started to outperform, were only down 2.8 percent in a period when the 10 year yield went to 4.15 percent. And if you open the hood and take a look, there's a lot of things that are happening. You said that the Dow Jones had certainly had a divergence from the other major indices. That's the S&P 500 and the triple Qs. And you have to look at what is owned in each one of those. Right. And, and it reminds me a lot. You know, you often say I'm a reform fund manager. I managed a, a tech fund in the year 2000. And I remember, you know, at a point, you know, everyone owned the technology companies to the exclusion of all other sectors. And what we're starting to see is something very similar. Some of the very largest companies in market cap in the S&P 500 are beginning to underperform in a very dramatic fashion. They're overowned, and many of them are still not cheap. Whereas at the same time, you know, smaller cap companies, uh, industrial companies, energy companies, uh, financials are actually building bases. And that's why, you know, the, the portfolio positioning going forward is going to be absolutely critical. And so we've talked about this, but I want you to do a quick primer course. There's a market cap weighted index that we look at and you can see what's happening. First of all, I want you to explain that, but you can see what's happening when these large market caps start to correct. Well, the S&P 500 is market cap based. The, 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 the selection and the inclusion of companies in the S&P is decided by a committee. And what often happens is as companies succeed and they get bigger and bigger, they become a bigger and bigger part of that index. So Apple is obviously uh, the largest market cap company, roughly 6% of the S&P. You know, Microsoft's right up there. Google's up there. And basically the top eight in the S&P 500 are roughly 23% of the market in cap. In what sector are they in? And they're all basically in the technology sector. And they're also in a sector that really benefited in, in some ways for the pandemic because it, it forward loaded trends that were going to take place over years. Years and it was just a two-year trend that uh, that occurred. So we saw a lot of excesses, probably a lot of pull-forward demand. So when you think about it, the valuation on those names is about 24 times earnings, whereas the balance is about 12.9. So the soldiers, if you will, in the S&P 500 are actually reasonably valued. Yeah, and so we've pointed that out, that those big tech names have an outlier effect on these indices. And let's now shift gears to the important meetings that happened this week. We had a lot of economic news. Most importantly, the Federal Reserve came out earlier this week. Right. Jerome Powell, uh, you know, they announced a 75 basis point hike, which was widely expected. And then in the press conference, you know, the market initially rallied off that because they feel like perhaps the pace of rate increases in the future is going to slow. But Powell basically said, we've got a long way to go. He re resumed that hawkish stance that he originally expressed at Jackson Hole and the market sold off because the belief now is that that terminal rate, in other words, the rate they're going to get to is a little higher than they had thought originally because inflation has been so persistent and uh, sticky. And so 75 basis points, of course, is what it came out. And then what happens in December is where all eyes went. And 50 basis points is the common thinking. So just in a matter of approximately four or five or six weeks, you're going to see 125 basis points hike from where it was, which was in the low threes. And still, Derek, historically, they don't stop raising rates until they see the whites of the eyes of inflation. Right. Historically, they haven't stopped uh, raising the Fed funds rate until it was above the rate of the CPI. And the last measure we saw on CPI was eight. The Fed funds rate, as you mentioned, is close to four-ish now, so there's a wide dichotomy there. That can close, of course, any number of ways. But most, the, most importantly, that inflation becomes down. Right. That would that would certainly help. The other thing that was a kind of a, a green shoot, however, was that he did acknowledge the lagged effect of monetary policy and the fact that there are leading indicators that are rolling over. So they are aware that the inflationary pressures are subsiding to a degree, uh, but he's certainly not prepared to pause, which is what the market, I think, is hoping for. And ladies and gentlemen, what is in your portfolio matters in time. Times like these.